Hello! This is part 2 of the tutorial on post-processing a portrait in GIMP 2.8. It is called Eyes, Lips and Hair. In this image work was done only on the skin. And this is the final image. I always start my work from duplicating the original image. And now I'm going to zoom in because I'm going to work with the eyes and I need to see what I'm doing. Using the free select tool I'm going to select the iris now. One is done and now I'm going to move to the other one. Now I'm going to change the mode of the free select tool to the add to the current selection so that my previously uh, made selection wouldn't disappear. As you see now, both irises are selected. Now I need to feather my selection and I usually choose 10 pixels for this kind of work. As a next step, go to Edit Copy, Edit Paste and then the irises are going to be made as a new layer. Now I'm going to use levels to bring some details to the irises. Here I'm going to play with the sliders because every photo is individual and you should try it for yourself and decide which settings uh, are suitable for your photo. I'm going to create a new transparent layer now. And here I'm going to set my foreground color to 808080, which is middle gray. And now I'm going to fill my transparent layer with this gray color using bucket tool. Set this gray layer to grain merge mode. Now I will use dodge and burn tool over gray layer as it helps to keep the saturation low while increasing the contrast. So your brush should be set to a very soft and now take your dodge and burn tool. It should be set to about 20 pixels. Now select dodge for the type and highlights for the range. Also I want to mention the exposure should be set to about 7. Now you need to paint over the bright area of the iris. Let's see how it looks like. And now I'm going to do the same for the second iris. Now go to Tool Options and change to Barn and Shadows and paint over the dark areas of the iris. What also is great about using the grey layer is that if you overdo the effect you can always reduce the opacity of the layer and decide how much of the contrast you really need. Now using the same settings I'm going to increase the contrast of the eyelashes. Now let's see the before and after. Yes, I definitely like this 
increase in contrast. Let's do the lips now. Select the background copy layer, take free select tool and carefully select the area around lips. Now in tool options change the mode to subtract from the current selection. And then select the area around teeth. Feather the selection by 10 pixels. Next go to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste and then it will be made into a new layer. I will use Levels to adjust the contrast of the lips. Once again I'm going to play with the sliders, but not too much to not to overdo it. I noticed the few marks on the lips which I want to remove, so I'm going to use healing tool with the big soft brush, size 20 pixels, and then I'm going to just remove what I don't like. As always, I'm going to have a look at the before and after. Yes, I definitely like the after effect. And now it's time for the teeth. Select the copy of the background layer. Take the free select tool and select the teeth. Don't forget to change mode to replace the current selection. Feather with selection with 10 pixels. Next go to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. And now we are going to work with the teeth on the separate layer. Now I will desaturate the teeth a bit because I want to remove the yellowness. And using the curves I'm going to brighten them up a bit by pulling the curve up just a tiny bit. I wanted to improve the look of the teeth just a tiny bit and so I did. Finally it's time for the hair. Right now the hair looks way too dark with no highlights and I'm going to improve it. Once again select the copy of the background layer. Take free select tool and select the area of the hair. The hair is the only thing which I select very roughly because it doesn't really need to be selected precisely, no one is going to see it. After I selected one half of the hair, I'm going to change the mode to the add to the current selection. You can make a single selection for the hair but I like to avoid the that middle part to not to make it too bright. Now as the hair is selected, feather with selection by 50 pixels. That's why you can allow yourself to do it very roughly. Once again go to Edit Copy, Edit Paste and our selection of the hair will turn into a new layer. Using the levels I'm going to brighten up the hair and bring back the highlights. Can you see the magic? I think it's just amazing what levels can do. And now I want to add a bit of more brightness to some areas. 
After creating a new transparent layer and setting this layer to overlay, I'm reducing the opacity to about 30% and using the big soft brush I'm going to paint some white into the hair. As you see, it's a very gentle effect, nothing major. Now I'm going to match all the layers apart from the original one. I made it to show you what I've done so far. Few more steps just to show you what else you can do with the portrait. So I'm duplicating the layer of the edited image and I desaturate it. I'm setting this desaturated layer to grain merge mode and to very low opacity to about 13-15%. It increased the contrast of the image but uh, it darkened the hair. So now I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to add a layer mask. Uh, black full transparency using big soft brush and the white color I'm going to paint over the mask to make the highlights on the face a bit stronger this is not essential but I'm doing it for the sake of demonstration Right click on the desaturated layer and I'm going to match the top two layers together. And to finish this image we need to sharpen it. I'm duplicating the top layer and call it sharp. For the general sharpening I'm going to filters, enhance and sharp mask. Here I use 1.3 for the radius and 0 0.30 for amount. And now I'm going to FX Foundry, Photo, Sharpen, High Pass Filter. I'm using 3 for sharpening strength and press OK. First of all, try opacity at about 50%. I'm adding a layer mask with black full transparency to this sharpened layer. And using big soft brush with white color, I'm going to paint over the iris to reveal the sharpness. The effect seems to be a bit too strong, so I'm reducing it to about 40% opacity. Now I'm going to match all the top layers apart from the original one, because I want to show you what I achieved in this tutorial, which is part 2. And now I'm going to show you the image I started to work with. So this is where I started. And this is the final result. Thanks for watching and remember to leave a comment if you enjoyed it.